welcome to Confused Reviews, where a cartoon drawing reviews movies. And I'm one of the few people that enjoyed 1985's Teen Wolf. Sure, it's not the greatest movie ever made, but it's a guilty pleasure and one I saw at a young age and has stuck with me to this day. And even though it's honestly a run-of-the-mill teen comedy with a werewolf in it, it was still a success in the fact that it spawned a sequel and a cartoon show. But if you thought that movie was bad, honey, that is Citizen Kane, The Shawshank Redemption, and A Clockwork Orange combined compared to today's film. 1987's. Teen Wolf 2. Leeching off the success of the first film like a tumor, It's not a tumor! It tells the story of Todd Howard, cousin of Scott, who was Michael J. Fox's character, who obviously doesn't reprise his role in this one, which is a damn shame because his charm and likability was one of the reasons I enjoyed the first film. But another big change is instead of basketball, the sport of choice is boxing. I'm sure if they ever made Teen Wolf 3, it would have been about some dumb shit like underwater basket weaving but I digress. Even before I start the damn movie, I already have something wrong with it. They used the wrong form of two. I know it's supposed to be a cute little thing like they did for the god-awful Dumb and Dumber 2, but the whole point of that movie is that they were idiots. There's no reason for this wrong use of two here. Another thing that's quite worrisome is the 3.1 score on IMDb and its measly 7% on Rotten Tomato. But I don't like to solely base my opinion of a film on its online score. But honestly, I'm just delaying the inevitable. Let's just go through this movie piece by piece and see why this movie failed. This is Teen Wolf 2. So the film begins with Dean Dunn, played by John Astin, complaining about how the only person they got for the boxing team was Todd Howard, whose only sport was the school band. If he was in the band, why did they pick him for the boxing team? Last time I checked, guys in the band aren't the most muscular guys and certainly can't box for a college team. What's next? Get a football star to become an all-star figure skater? Three minutes in and this damn movie already makes zero sense. Anyways, the only reason Todd got a full scholarship was based on Scott being good at basketball. So how does his cousin being good at basketball have the slightest bit to do with him being good at boxing? That'd be like getting Michael Jordan's third cousin to become a pro at the NHL solely based on his related family being good at another sport. Charles is riding on this boxing team! My reputation as an educator is riding on this boxing team! Then why didn't you get someone who's good at boxing? We we are then introduced to our protagonist, Todd Howard, and the filmmakers assume that if you just throw a pair of glasses on Jason Bateman, it'd make him nerdy and sympathetic. It doesn't. Oh, and also James Hampton is back, and wait, what the fuck? He can just randomly turn into a werewolf whenever he feels like it? In the first film, it was involuntary, only happened at a full moon or when he was super angry. Making it so that he can do it at the flip of a coin is fucking stupid and destroys all mystery and suspense that makes you go, oh, is he going to turn here? And turns it into... He could just turn here if he feels like it. Meh. Well, it is true that sometimes it skips family members. I really wish it skipped him and this damn movie wouldn't exist. Plus, him not knowing he's a werewolf until later in the film is a lot better and worked in the first movie. Scott's dad didn't just go up to him and go, Hey son, have a good day at school, and by the way, you're a werewolf. And one last thing, why is Scott's dad driving him to the first day of college? I'm all for an uncle being nice and helping him out, but it's the first day. If I was a parent, and thank god I'm not, I'd want to see where my son's going off to. Or better yet, why doesn't Todd drive himself? He drives around just fine later in the movie. This scene only exists to shove in your face. Hey, remember him? He was in the first movie. Styles, We're roommates. What? Styles, Mr. H. What? That's not Styles. I mean, for god's sake, they got a different actor to play the werewolf and changed his name. Why didn't they just change it to be Styles' cousin, too? I mean, it makes as much sense as anything else in this damn movie. And Uncle Harold leaves just to turn into a werewolf again, just to wave goodbye. The sudden logic change of the werewolves is fucking stupid. After that, we're introduced to Chubby, who stabs Howard's grocery bag with a sword. Todd then gets mad at Styles for choosing classes he doesn't like. I mean, there's not one science class on here. Get it? He's a nerd. Todd goes to the office to try to change his classes, but realizes that the lady running the joint is the nun from the Blues Brothers. He then decides the only way to salvage the scene is to copy what Scott did in the original and uses fancy schmancy red contacts to get what he needs. He then goes and talks to Coach Finstock. You're from Beacon Town, aren't you? Not really. I'm not the same guy who played Coach Finstock in the first one, but I doubt anyone will notice. Todd sees Nikki again in the library. They had a brief exchange of dialogue earlier, but it was so goddamn pointless, I decided not to mention it. Anyway, he gets mad because she took the book he needed, and she calls him a jock, and he gets offended? 
Hey, buddy, I'd love to be called a jock rather than a biology nerd. Oh, wait, never mind. That whole outburst scene was pointless because she gives him the book anyway. We're then forced to watch some shitty dance scene where Todd starts to turn into a werewolf while dancing with Lisa. He then fully transforms, but to save money on a cool transformation scene like the howling American werewolf in London or even the first film, he just looks into Chubby's tuba for a bit and BAM, werewolf. And he's already changed back. That was a fun 32 seconds of werewolf. Todd's in class when some asshole puts a container of ants by his feet and they crawl all over him. I can see the YouTube parodies now. College kid ant feet prank. Gone insexual. Get it? Because ants are insects. Next, they replace Todd's project with pictures of dogs and the mom from Better Off Dead tries helping him. But he seems more content with being our sarcastic prick to the only person besides Nikki who's nice to him at this damn school. We finally get to the first boxing scene and there are more slow motion shots than a Zack Snyder movie. Todd finally gets to fight and obviously gets his ass handed to him. That is until he wolfs out and wins the fight. But I have a feeling this would be breaking some sort of rule. If Floyd Mayweather just randomly turned into a panda on the ring, do you think the fight would go on? A very strong maybe. I don't know much about sports. Next, we're at a party. Oh, cool. Maybe we'll see some enjoyment out of this. You broke my heart. Wait. I can really shake them down. What are you doing? Do you know? Stop. Please stop this. Okay, so for some reason, it turns into if Grease and the Howling had a love child with the makeup budget of a ham sandwich. Please kill me. So after that painful scene, Todd walks up and hold on a second. Well, this is a first. Looks like Todd here is the first werewolf hipster. Moving on, we have the same sports montage that every sports movie has. But they even make that shitty because it's the same shots with people in different uniforms. I mean, look at Jason Bateman's face. He's thinking, man, why did I sign up for this shit heap? Todd and Chubby go riding around in the convertible with the license plate wolf too. Oh, and Todd tries to run over some guy on a bike. Attempted manslaughter really makes for a sympathetic protagonist, huh? Oh, and he ditches Chubby for some random chicks. Again, fantastic. Styles gets locked out of his room because Todd's a dick now, so he goes to Chubby's room. Look at all the food-related stuff on his door. Get it? He's fat. Plus, he farts too. Man, Kevin James made a career out of those two things. Next, Todd starts a... I'm really struggling right now. Nikki confesses her love for Todd, and he just leaves. Prick. Todd is playing putt-putt when his girls ditch him for the generic leather jacket douchebag, and he crushes the golf ball? Really, he crushes the golf ball. With his bare hands. And it's not like he's a werewolf. He's supposed to be a normal guy. Well, in the words of Ron Burgundy, It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. So now Styles and Chubby are studying. So Todd decides to bother the shit out of them because he knows he'll get a good grade on the finals regardless of what he actually knows. So now the two who usually party and don't care about school are what Todd is now. A great reversal. Which is stupid and cliche by itself, but the speech from Styles after is 100 times worse. What have I become? A jerk. <laughs> Todd then pulls a Rocky V and goes to the boxing arena to collect his thoughts. And again, James Hampton is there to comfort our shitty protagonist. His saint of an uncle tries to help him train, but they skip over that scene. No, I'm not even kidding. I didn't edit that. He literally puts on the boxing gloves and they switch over to Todd, who goes to see Nikki. Wow, of all the shit you could have skipped over, you skip the training scene? That's usually the best parts of movies. For example, Rocky, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Pumping Iron, Over the Top, Bloodsport, The Karate Kid, Remember the Titans, Major League, Raging Bull, Varsity Blues, The Fighter, Team America, World Police, G.I. Jane, and Batman Begins. Just to name a few. Note, Confused Reviews is not saying all of these are good movies, just movies with good training montages. Oh, never mind, instead of him having a training montage, we get a montage of him studying for the big test. They probably only had enough money in the budget for two montage songs. Oh, and yeah, big surprise, he passes the big final blah blah next. Professor Brooks confronts Dean Dunn about Todd's grades and everything else, and she is a werewolf as well? I only assume that because of the red eye bullshit. When was this established? Never. That's when. It's only there as a, oh, look at that moment. Todd steps into the ring as himself. Let me take a wild guess. Somehow this scrawny little shit is somehow going to beat this 200 pound already fantastic boxer. And when you say it out loud, it sounds even more dumb. I hope he kills you. 
oh cool, just casually yell out threats to your students. You totally get away with that and not get fired. So Todd gets thoroughly beaten, as expected, and he denies being coming the wolf in the final fight, as expected. Todd then punches him a couple of times and knocks him out. Let me start off by saying, fucking called it. But with that, our tale comes to a very rushed end. And that was Teen Wolf 2. Holy shit, was it bad. Not only being a rehash of the original, except instead of high school, it's college, and instead of basketball, it's boxing, the characters are unlikable and lack any charisma. The charm and likability was one of my favorite aspects of the original, and they totally missed the mark here. It's supposed to be a fun, popcorn, 80s werewolf movie with likable characters. Instead, this is the same shitty nerd-in-college environment who gets popular, has too big of an ego, loses his fame, and has to regain it by the finale. But where other films with this idea flourish because of likable characters, competent directing, and actual writing that makes sense, this film lacks all of those. I mean, even everyone looks disinterested with even being in this movie, and do I blame them? Not at all. This was just a terrible attempt at milking a sequel out of a successful werewolf movie. Case in point, American Werewolf in Paris. Need I say more? So Teen Wolf 2 undoubtedly gets an F. This is not only the worst werewolf movie I've ever seen, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen and I've seen a lot of bad movies. If you took anything out of this review, avoid this movie like the plague, because it is awful. I'm Confused Reviews, thanks for watching. <laughs>